might be fixing to run away from that. <laughs> I did say Richard said he was leaving room for the Holy Ghost in his place. <laughs> I wanted to say sorry, you won't leave it. But I didn't. Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, I want to uh, hope to minister this morning. Uh, Hebrews 11, 13 and 14. These all died in faith. Wasn't that pretty up there? Can y'all yeah. see that better now? Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's good. We're going to put one just like it on the back wall. Now that it's cool enough, I get the it. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. Well, that ain't a very good way to start a uh, message, is it? Uh, we're all about receiving, are we not? Amen. So just, just hang around a little bit. Not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embrace them and confess. That's a scary word. Is it not confession? That's a scary word. Confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. That's this earth, right? <laughs> Verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Now I want to speak to you for a few minutes this morning on what are you saying? Everybody say that back to the For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. I've heard a comment many times and over the last few years I've come to realize that I don't think it's possible Though I do understand the context within which it's said, when people are talking about folks that are too heavenly minded for any earthly good, have y'all heard that before? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if that's possible. I understand how it's meant. Yeah. You know, it's generally focused on people that are a little bit self righteous. But, but I, I think we have got to get where every day that we wake up, we got heaven on our mind. Does yes. anybody remember what we spoke about last Sunday morning? Yeah. About waking up our minds, being awakened to the fact that Jesus has come, that, that the news, that the headlines of, of the heathen media outlets, and I, I, I don't even know those people, but you know, their, their belief system is different than mine, but they're screaming every day that just Jesus is coming. I don't care what it really says, what it should be saying to us is that Jesus is coming, and we've got to be aware of that. We've got to be aware of that constantly. These, give me back to 13, Brother Shannon, these all died in faith. These is referring to men and women. Hebrews chapter 11. What do you think of automatically when you hear Hebrews 11? Faith. Faith. The roll call of the faithful or the roll call of faith and the men and women that are listed in there are very prominent characters in the Old Testament that, uh, that their, their identifying characteristic was their faith. Can I tell you that there's nothing better to be known for than your faith? <laughs> nothing better to be identified for is to be a man or woman of faith. Somebody that still believes, somebody that holds on, somebody that stopped letting down, back down, gave up. Right. What do you say? What are you saying? And the actions through which their faith was manifest. Brother McKinney, every one of them that is mentioned, they, they, there's an action that follows them. Brother Pete, there was something that they did, that they did by faith, that became what defined them. Yeah. Faith is, according to Hebrews 11 and 6, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So hope for evidence of things not seen. And in Hebrews 11, the Bible says, these all died in faith. 
So, Brother Billy, they stayed faithful Amen. to the very end for them. They stayed faithful unto death. Amen. And did not receive the promises, but saw them afar off. By faith. Right? That's right. It's the only way you can see something that hasn't happened yet. Okay? It's by faith. And they were persuaded of them and embraced them, which led to an admission or a confession that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. So, in light of the fact that faith is their defining characteristic and faith is hope and it concerns things that haven't been seen, it is clear that these members of the roll call of the faithful remain so because they refuse to be defined. Listen to me right now. They refuse. Everybody say refuse. <laughs> to be defined by what they were or were not and where they were or were not because can I tell you that much of our That's why it's important 
that we must know the Word of God, the Bible, which is the conveyor upon which both of those are delivered to us. My faith is not built in the fact that I have a tremendous heritage of apostolic beliefs. My faith is not built in the fact that we have a beautiful place to worship. My faith is not built in the fact that, uh, that I am, my children are the fifth generation in this church to be, to be hopeful still. Yes. My faith is built on the fact that the promises of God are in Him, yea and amen. Yes, and that I believe His promises. Yes. And the ultimate promise is, Brother Billy, whether they are alive when the trumpet sounds, I get to go be with Amen. Oh, amen. That's my promises. Yes. That's my promises. Here a while back, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I had a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of licks on the head when I was a little girl. <laughs> And even since I've got a big bit of it, I'm not going to leave more on I'm over there and knock yourself smooth and silly get into the car. I knock my head in the side of the car over. Then it makes me mad. I forget things sometimes, but Billy, I was talking to somebody yesterday and <clears throat> I couldn't tell you right now for a hundred million dollars what I was going to say to him because I forgot it. But there are so many people that we talk to so many people that we uh, interact with. Uh, here a while back, uh, when, when that happened with Sister Barker, uh, uh, it, it got put on KFB as well. Don't y'all saw that? It was a tremendous interview. Oh, that yeah. was great. Sister Barker just blew it out of the park. Yeah. I mean, I thought he had her lady priest. I had him look walking on the wall. But uh, when I got on KFBS Plus Facebook page, yeah. there were uh, people making fun of us. Anybody see that beside me? Mm -hmm. And never had it cost to do anything to get a reaction out of people. Did anybody else see that? I did. Yeah, that was ugly. Yeah, that yeah. was really ugly. And Griff, before well, I got mad in an old way then, mm -hmm. I got fired up mad, man. I've got my keyboard out, I'm going to let her rip. <laughs> Then I realized something about the, the Bible tells me to rejoice. Yes. Right. And you know what I realized, Sister Weezy? The devil's mad. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. And you know what? I went from being upset, hurt feelings, embarrassed. I knew they were going to make me look like a bunch of coops and they handle the coops and stuff. Come on, come on. I went from that, Sister Maria, to giddy. I mean, I was, I was so stinking happy. I'm thinking, talk more bad stuff. That's right. That's right. And they were making money off of it. Yeah. 
Well, then Paul cast the devil out of her. Yes, and him and Silas, for their trouble, get their back beat uh -huh. and get thrown into the, the inner prison right. where the worst of the worst went. Right. Huh? That's right. I'm talking about faith. That's right. Faith that it's not, it's not based upon where I am or what's going on in my life. Because something better's coming. Right. I said something better's right. coming. Yes, the Bible says, and then, yeah. Paul and Silas prayed yeah. and sang praises of the God. Come on now. Now listen to me. Listen to me right now. We can relate to that right this minute. But when all hell breaks loose in your life, you try to throw up a song. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got one all right. The he ball song. Huh? Listen to me. We got one. Yeah, nobody knows the trouble I see. Don't know. We got that. But ladies and gentlemen, we've got to get the faith that the Bible speaks of. That doesn't matter what's going on right now. I'm looking at it anyway. I'm lifting up my eyes because that's what the Bible says. When you see these things begin to come to pass, look up. Look up your eyes for your redemption. Draw it out. That's faith. Faith in God. <laughs> Second Peter 1 and 19 says, We have also... A more sure word of prophecy. Yes, sir, amen. Let me read it all. Whereunto ye do well that you take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Now, Peter, when he says a more sure, I want you to listen to this. It's about building your faith this morning. Yes, sir, it's about I started to, I may do it again tonight, preach about Joseph. I had it on my mind. The Lord gave me a thought That's when I was in conference. The Lord gave me a, a great thought. But you got to be a man of faith to go through what he went through. Right? Oh, and yeah. still see your dream realized. Right? <laughs> and still see your dreams come to pass. Yeah. Peter. Went up on top of the mountain along with James and John. And Brother Billy, they saw Jesus descend up in the air so far above the earth. And he met with Moses and Elijah, who had both been gone a lot of years. Moses died, and Elijah was taken to heaven in a whirlwind. But Jesus was transfigured, the Mount of Transfiguration, and his visage changed, his form changed, and it's quite possible that it was a glimpse into what we'll be like in heaven. It's a possibility of that. Uh, but don't, don't misunderstand. They knew who Jesus was, and they knew who Moses and Elijah were. They, they recognized him. Okay. So, they're on top of this mountain. This is Peter talking. He says, we have a more sure word of prophecy. They're on top of the mountain. I don't want to lose anybody, so you've got to listen to this. And while they see that, there comes a voice from heaven that says, as he did in baptism, something very similar, that this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Something similar to that. Not the exact words, but something similar. And Peter, James, and John heard that. A voice from heaven. Okay? Now, this is what Peter's referring to when he says, Oh, God, help me. I can preach about 30 minutes right now on this very thought. I want you to listen to me. We've got some folks in here that need to hear this this morning. Listen to me. Peter, James, and John were standing on the mountain. Mm -hmm. They are watching this take place in the area above them. They don't doubt that it happened because it did. Yes, it 
Okay. And they heard a voice from heaven. They heard a voice from heaven. Speak of the man Christ Jesus. Doesn't mean there's nothing about the Trinity. It just means Jesus was fully man and fully God. And there was a method to the Lord's man, so to speak. He spoke just as he did at his baptism and at least one other occasion. And they heard the voice of God speak. All of them clearly they understood. But Peter says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. And he's referring to the message that they preach which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now picture this now. They're on the top of the mountain. Can you see it? They went up this mountain. Peter, James, John, and Jesus. And while they're there, Jesus is called up above the earth to meet with Moses and Elijah. He's transfigured. He's changed. His, his, he shines. He's glorified in a manner of speaking. And they heard a voice from heaven. But Peter now says... We have a more sure word of prophecy whereon you would do really well. It would be a good thing to listen to it. Sometimes you know translation is easy for me to understand. Where unto you it would be a good idea that you listen to it. Because it is a light that shines into a dark place. Now, now, Brother Ross, it's the word. A sure word of prophecy. Yes, I'm talking to you about faith. I'm talking to you about what are you saying? Huh? Listen to me right now. You, do your picture. You, it's important that you see these disciples of Jesus. Jesus is here and they hear the voice of heaven. But now Peter, and, and he's talking about that in the, in the preceding verses of 2 Peter. Okay? But then he says, he has the audacity to say, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, which is more certain, more solid than that what we heard on the mountain. Okay? Are you with me? And it is as unto a light that shined into a dark place. Okay. They heard the voice of God express His delight in His Son. But now we have a more sure word. Here we go. Here's what I've got to build faith in you. Peter, James, and John. Somebody tell me where they were on the mountain. On the Mount of Transfiguration, I've told you a few times. Where was Jesus and Moses and Elijah? Lifted up above the earth. Where were Peter, James, and John? And what were they doing? Say that one more time. Watching. They were, they were watching. Listen. So what makes this a more sure word of prophecy than that which they experienced on the Mount of Transfiguration? It's the message that we preach. Is one that takes you from an observer to a participator. Yeah. And it is the light, the light that shines into the dark place. It's the light of the Word of God that shines into a life that has no direction, that has no hope, that has no faith in what God can do for you. But the Word of God, which is spoken to you as it is this morning, will give birth to dreams. yourself before. It's a more sure word because even though they heard the voice of God, it was to an unregenerated mind. But now that they're filled with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is the difference maker. The Holy Ghost is taking this experience from something you observe to something you experience for yourself. Amen. 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 I've had two people lately, at least two. I think I mentioned this the other night. At least two 
over the years has been more that have a completely skewed and jacked up view of God. Because they want to come to church. They want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. They want to be what God wants them to be. They've seen a glimpse of it. They, they've caught a hold of the possibilities. But for some reason, we feel as if we have to make ourselves presentable to God before we come to it. Can I tell you, if the devil can get everybody convinced of that, ain't nobody be saved. But I got even, Brother Rice, even as a pastor of this church, as a Holy Ghost filled man, husband, father, I still have got to be reminded. He loves me. And that though I make mistakes, and though I get down in the mother groves, and though I go through this, that, and the other, I still belong to him. Yes, sir. But if I lose my faith, it's not going to be. It's not going to be that God can't do it. It's going to be that He just can't do it for me. <laughs> huh? It's going to be that He can't do it for me. But I've got to keep the faith. I gotta keep the faith through the wilderness. I gotta keep the faith in the jail. I gotta keep the faith through the fiery furnace. I've got to keep the faith in the lion's den. I've got to keep the faith no matter where I may be. Because it's my faith in God that's gonna bring me out. It's not my abilities. God have mercy. It's not my abilities, not my education, not my intellect, not my speaking ability, not the fact that I love my family or that I love my wife or I've got a good group of people around me. Faith in God. And an old song says, He didn't bring me this far. I said, He didn't bring me this far to leave me. He didn't bring me this far to leave me. Verse 14. I'm wrapping up. Verse 14. Again, Hebrews 13 and 14. For they that say such things. I'm not going to go into a whole lot about it, but you do know the Bible says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. Right? The Bible says the word of faith is even nigh thee. It's in your mouth. Right? Yeah. You know what the Bible says? Yeah. It's in your mouth. For they that say such things... Let's talk about what those things are. What are the things they say? According to Hebrews 13, I mean 11 and 13, they are pers oh, oh, Jesus. They are persuaded. Everybody say persuaded. Persuaded. What? <laughs> what do you think of when you say, when you think of being persuaded? Well, let, let me ask you this. Let me prove it this way. If I if I get Bob up here and then we're about to go home and and, and I pull out a hundred dollars out of my billboard, which I don't have. <laughs> this is just an illustration. <laughs> but I pull a hundred dollars out of my billboard, Brother Billy. And I go over and give it to him. Or anybody for that matter. Maybe a few of you. Maybe a few of them. But if I go give it to my son, how much persuasion am I going to have to do to get him to take it? 